Uh, this this is this is any well I guess it has to do with drawing because this is what I do with my drawing. Um, I think that was a trip earlier. That was I think y'all have seen that. That that's yeah. uh, Caligny Beach at uh, Hilton Head early morning. Uh, later that same morning, Susan was still asleep. Uh, morning coffee, and this was on her back porch. It's kind of cool. Okay, so this is where I started this week. Uh, it was a detour worth the calories. It was uh, Teleco Plains. If you're ever at Teleco Plains, this is Teleco Grains Bakery. It is wonderful. Sandwiches, pastries. But what we're going to do today is a little bit of this. You know, you know those flying shapes. You know, we did with one. Per so. If, when you're dealing with um, a building in perspective, you see this line goes here. So, so if I want to find my uh, vanishing point, all I do is I look to where the bottom line converges with the top line. And so when I actually do it this way, I realize you know some of my windows are a little off. See how that one actually could have been. A but you know, I was, it was a quick sketch. And, you know, all in all, that's, you know, they line up pretty well. See the bottom lines there. But when you, when you know how to look for uh, a vanishing point to line things up, it's just like what you're doing for those flying shapes. And then, like these that are angled at a different direction, they're going a different direction. They have a different vanishing point. Okay, do you see how mm -hmm. the bottoms of those? <clears throat> but the way you're saying it sounds like you look for your vanishing point, but actually you probably just drew those. But if we were trying to do that and make sure they were all lined up, would we sort of mark a vanishing point and then get those lines on it? Like if you, know, you if you like felt you had to, if you yeah. felt you had to. I mean, what I did first is I... I tried to look and see first, you know, like this would be the first line that I drew, because mm -hmm. this is the closest to me. Remember, what, like those over those 20, pa 20 things right. that you drew. So much of what you did is now going to be applied. You know, if I, I if I draw this line that's closest to me, I know that's going to be the tallest line. And then I look at. What is the angle? It might be where I just hold my pencil out and look at that angle and bring it down like that. Okay. So I get that angle. And then I might hold my pencil up to the, and just, you know, so you see artists doing this. Mm -hmm. They're measuring. They're comparing angles. They're, so, I mean, it, that's one way. But a lot of times, you know, if you don't do this first, and realize, okay, that's a pretty sharp angle. If I was sitting closer, it would even be a sharper angle. Mm -hmm. The further out I get, the, the more level it gets. So, uh, but we're going to be working on um, some things like this. And also, when I'm above, so that my vanishing point's here, so my eye level is right here. Your vanishing point is where your eye level is. And, and some, it's, it might be easier instead of saying vanishing point, think of, I mean, excuse me, horizon line is where your eye level is. I said that wrong. Horizon line is where your eye level is. So if but I your was... your vanishing point is on your horizon. But your vanishing point is on your horizon line. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but what we do today will hopefully also help with that. But if you, if you can at least get the angles, general angles, as in, you know, getting farther away, it gets thin, it's smaller, mm -hmm. then it's going to give the illusion of depth. And if I was looking straight on at it, there would be no angles. But that's to me, is not near as interesting. Okay, so that was Teleco Plains. And then I, you know, talked, you know, because I did, I really wished I had put something else here and had that picture here and then talked about it. But... I didn't. So, uh, you know, journals are, are what they are. Uh, visit to the bakery 
was our brunch. We had a huge, or I had a huge apple turnover, and Brad had an enormously heavy iced cinnamon roll. He couldn't even eat it all. We decided it'd be better if we didn't buy anything to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, and then um, Ben and Billy are my hiking buddies. Uh, Billy's a goat. Ben is a bear. And they, they ride in my backpack and they go places with me and I put them in certain situations and take pictures of them. And, and originally, ben, uh, Billy came from uh, Goats on a Roof on 441. Uh, Brad bought him for me when uh, he knows I love stuffed animals. And, uh, and, and there's a lot of people who hike with buddies and, and put them in all situations. But... Um, when I was one day when I actually spotted a bear in the Smoky Mountains, I was like, oh, "There's a bear!" Mm -hmm. Then we documented that by buying us a bear so Billy could have a friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, anyway, originally Billy was purchased because I thought, you know, someday I'm going to have grandkids, and I want to write a book of all of Billy's adventures so my grandkids will know I'm not a stick in the mud, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. So I, he, I've got thousands of pictures of him doing a variety of things. He's been to Curacao. He's been to or Ohio, Texas. He's been to the beach. He's been in snow. <laughs> you know. Anyway, uh, this was a, a hike to um, Abram Falls. And uh, I've, I've been there many times. And if, and if you compared this to a photo, you would see I was a little off on exactly where the waterfall was but who cares we didn't know. you know mm -hmm. it's it did it capture the feel of where i was mm -hmm. that's what i was concerned with and and then i write you know where it is the date and uh, this was plein air i was sitting on a log painting this so if i do it uh on site i like to note that i did and that just it helps me uh, keep up with. I think I would remember anyway, but it, it helps. And then um, these were leaves that I picked up on that Abram Falls. I didn't fool with casting a shadow on these, but uh, <laughs> they were actually this size. I laid them on the paper and traced them and then I painted them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that, do that. Uh, but it was it was just fun way to, to remember that. Uh, this was another leaf uh, from a, a different trail and then we uh, went to Rocky Top it, that was our 14 miler uh, going up and up and up that was one of the last it, you had to go what you started way down below but this is toward this you're on the Appalachian Trail at this point and you go up to the very top of this mountain then you go down and then one more way way steep up and it's at the very end of the hike. But then you get here. Mm -hmm. And this one, I started plein air. Um, but we had to make it down the mountain. We, we'd been, we stayed up here for an hour. It took us five hours to get up here. And I had to make it down the mountain before the uh, parking lot closed. Because our car would be locked in. <laughs> so that was incentive to get going. To get going. It took us three hours to get down, and part of that, I was booking it. Mm. So, uh, anyway, so what I did is I got this started there. And then, uh, as it says, it says oh, over 500 elephant. Oh, let's see where I put that. Oh. You had good weather. Oh, we had gorgeous weather. Mm. Uh, this was plen th somewhere. I thought I wrote it. Ooh, this is plein air and studio. Mm. I came back and touched it up because I didn't get as many, you know, because watercolor does dry lighter than when you first put it down. So I wanted to emphasize some of the distant mountains. The weather couldn't have been better. The, the, we started, it was 38 degrees when we started this hike. And the high upper elevation was 40. But when you're in this, up here we were in the full sun and our thermometer went up to 60 but we hiked in uh, one lightweight hiking shirt and a t-shirt mm -hmm. and it was I mean I couldn't ask for better now the day we left they got bad weather high winds roads closed mm -hmm. 
and and almost every day that it rained it rained in the evening and then this this was oh this is the one i put plein air in studio i did the same thing on this one uh this is to spruce flat falls and um we hiked there it's a fairly short hike and that i sat on the rock down below the falls while brad explored up here and brad would be about you know, about that tall. Wow. Wow. You know, wow. if, if you saw him. <laughs> now, when you use the watercolors, you use the browns and tans and things in there, not the purples and the reds. And all I did on this because of speed. You know, yeah. it's like right. when, but I did throw in, there, there's actually a lot of purple in the mm -hmm. shadows. You might not can see it from where you are. Um, but I will, I'd pick up the purple. I, I didn't pick straight brown. Mm -hmm. I'd throw in something else with it but it's uh and it's just a great way to document memories and and where you've been so that was that was my trip so thank you for going down memory lane okay today um we're going to be working with we're going to continue our work with perspective so you're going to need a ruler which is right here if you don't have one And you'll probably need you either need you'll probably need to tear out a sheet. You know, I mean, you can try it in your notebook or in your sketchbook, but it might you might find it easier uh, not to have ridges from your spiral notebook. I, just, I didn't grab this out before. All right, so I'm going to show you. All right, do we need the video? It's on. Okay. Okay, see, like, this was an assignment in middle school. It was uh, the, the one-point perspective where I started a drawing that looked like this. Here's the center, and then each corner of the paper aimed to this and so I call it the, the um, room in space or something like that float floating objects and then the students had to create uh, there were certain uh, like an open an opening in a wall and when you have you know some of this were some of this we're not going to necessarily do I'm just walking through this in to what we're going to go today but if if you have like if you're drawing a building like the building I just showed you how that had angled lines if you show a doorway or something opened you're not going to see the framing on the inside of this door on this side you're only going to see that side so as you start observing things pay attention to what you see and what you don't see because that's going to go to to draw what you see, not what you know. You know, you might know that that there's thickness here, but if you don't see it, don't draw it, because this at least this gives the illusion of thickness just by the uh, space between here and here. And if it's this thick here, it's going to be a little skinnier here because this further out, even though the wall might be the same thickness in all. As you get further away, you get smaller. And um, then this, here's an, uh, this taking that uh, same concept, you know, like we did the scroll. Remember how, how if you, you know, tear out the scroll and you continue the lines um, for thickness, it's the same, same thing I did here, but you only do the side that you would see. So a lot, a lot of what we've done here, here's on the walls on this side this time. So you see it here, but not here. Now, see, I messed up here. You see how this should have been over here. This should have been over here. Mm. See everybody, that one's right. But, um, you know, spheres, if you want to do patterns and things, you know, you can just, as long as the one that's right at you, coming right at you is straight 
then the others, you know, angle out. And what, what's fun, what's cool about this one, um, and, and we'll do one like this, is this is still aiming at the vanishing point. This, you know, I just did three lines like this and made a square, and then I went back and erased in between where the blocks would have a gap. And I'll show you how to do that if you, if you want to show something in a distance and you would be doing the same thing, um, whether it was round or square. But this is just kind of a fun, playful exercise if you, if you want any, I mean, I can make copies of any of these and uh, give to you. Uh, but here's, here's a colored version of something else that I was playing with. But what we're going to work with is boxes like you see in, in this picture. Here is our horizon line. So that's where our uh, eye level is. And um, the vanishing point here is at the very edge of the paper. Now, if you have larger paper, you're, you know, see how when your vanishing point is close to your objects, it's going to skew them a little bit. Uh, so they're going to look really angled when they might not be. So that's why sometimes when I would work with students, I'm going to slide this over, so it might be where that was too close to have the vanishing point on the paper. So we would tape their paper to the table so it didn't move. And then way out here, we'd put a piece of tape with a dot on it. And then they would aim out here. So uh, if your vanishing point doesn't fit well on, on your paper, what you're doing, then secure your paper like to, a, to one of these to where you get it up, move it around, and it's not going to screw you up um, by picking it up because it'll be taped and it'll stay taped with the vanishing point out to the side so that um, you don't lose that until you're through with the drawing. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. that's huge. Because some of the kids would move there and then go, <gasps> Where? And, 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 but it's not horrible to get it back because if you've drawn lines, you know, you just take your ruler and you see where they're aiming and you reset it. So it's, it's not possible. to It is possible to redo. So what we're going to do first is uh, I'm going to show you how to draw these boxes to where they're above or below a line. Uh, like, like this. Can you see that at all? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's, here's my horizon line. So I'm going to just make mine dark, and I'm going to go over it and pen. Uh, just so that uh, you can see it better and I'll talk it through and I want y'all to to do it with me uh, Now your horizon line you might want to make it uh, in pencil so that you can erase it when you put a box over it But I mean your whole thing can be in pencil. I'm just going to do this in pen so you can see it so Here's my horizon line and uh, I did it about a third of the, you know, you don't want it dead center. It's not exactly a third, but it's, it's close enough. Okay? Everybody got enough light or is it just me? <laughs> it's me. I feel like it's dark in here today. Yeah, it's going to be so dark outside. All right, so if, if we're looking at an object, and I should, I'll just grab this one because it's sort of that shape. Um, if I'm looking at an object, and I have it turned to where um, I only see two sides, I don't see the top, and I don't see the bottom, then that means the horizon line, or my, my uh, horizon line, my eye level is somewhere in the middle. If I can see the top, I'm above it. And so I will draw the top and you'll see three sides. The, um, 
three planes, the top and the two sides. If I'm, I can flip it over because it looks funny. If I'm below it, I'm going to see the bottom and two sides, but I'm not going to see the top. So I'm going to show you how you can draw objects to know, you know, whether they're up, whether they're down. And um, it'll help you when you do buildings and whatever else, whatever else you want to do. All right, so the first thing I like to do now, obviously, we are not looking at these straight on. You know, straight on would be different. But I'm going to draw the point that's closest to me first. Does that sound familiar? Okay. So I'm going to, however tall you want your building, what's wonderful about these grid rulers is you can line up this red line with your horizon line. And you can go, hmm, let's see, I want this box, building, whatever it is, uh, to be yay tall. I didn't even measure it. It's probably a little over an inch. Yeah, mine's about close to an inch and a half. Okay? So you decide how tall you want it. You do that line first. That's the line closest to you. Okay, now, remember all those pivot things when we were doing the flying shapes? Where, don't draw a line, an, a linear perspective line, unless you're aiming at the vanishing point. So I'm going to line my ruler up with the vanishing point. So this is going to be my pivot place. So where, how, however long you want that side of that building or that box, it can be, we'll just say box for now. I, I, since I already have mine drawn, I'm going to say, oh, I want it that long. Okay? So you're aiming da down to the, to the right. You're on the right side of the building. You're aiming to the right. So I'm going to go to the bottom. Now I'm going to aim up to it. And, uh, you know, you, you might actually accidentally draw it too long if you're dealing in pencil. But then you can correct how it make these even by, again, lining up your, this, this, this is such a good tool. When you line this red line up with your horizon line, you make sure it's straight. And then you can connect the two and know they're vertical. That's huge. Because a lot of times if you're drawing buildings freehand, you miss the vertical. And you know it's straight up and down, but you'll miss it. Okay, so now we have the right side of the box. So let's now aim over here. And if you end up doing large drawings, you might end up and, and you work off your paper because your vanishing points off your paper, you might end up even having to get a yardstick <laughs> because, <laughs> because I've, I, you know, when the, my kids were working with 18 by 24 sheets of paper and a large drawing, this 18 inch ruler wouldn't reach. So depending on how big you, you do this, again, how wide do you want this box? You aim the left to the left side and aim the top to the left side. And then you always double check the vertical by lining that up with your horizon line. Ta-da! I did the bottom and the top aiming to the left, left vanishing point. And then I did the far side, <clears throat> excuse me, tilted that, make y'all dizzy. You just haven't done this side yet. No, but it just looks like it's kind of way too long. Well, just don't go that far. Just make it to here. You know, it's however, oh, okay. however, side, however big you want your box. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can go right there. Okay. And then... Yep. And then that can go and right there. Yeah, you're right. You're Somebody's like, I kept thinking I had to go all the way. No, no, like, you can right. however wide you want it. Now, since y'all are working in pencil, erase the lines. Erase the horizon line inside your box. And that'll make it appear more solid.
and the coffee is ready if anybody wants any. I also have a bottle of water on the porch if you don't have anything to drink. So Carrie, that one you sent us that you see all the lines in the background, that was interesting. Was Could, couldn't me. do anything with it no, right me. now. But <laughs> I look at it and I'm like, I, I, I don't even sure what I would do what with do. this yet, you know. Just saying. Which one? It was a, it was like drawing box, not just boxes, all kinds of shapes. Mm -hmm. But you saw the lines behind mm -hmm. the front. Oh, you yeah. know. Oh, the tile. Yeah, I guess it was. I have it on my phone. I'll okay. pull it up. <clears throat> it was. Show me what you're talking about, and I'll come back to talk. I'll, uh, it was. You know how we just erased the horizon line, but this had a lot more lines in there for some. You know, like you saw what was behind it. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't really know what quite to do with that. That, I'll, I'll, I'll come back yeah. to that in a minute. Okay. Yeah. That is drawing through the shapes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and that allows you. Because some people need to see where that line goes, even though they can't see it in a solid figure. Okay. Um, so it's just it's just another way of kind of assuring yourself that you've got the right volume. But thanks for bringing that up. I'll we'll I'll pull that up again in a minute. Okay. So now. Remember when I showed you the box, what, you know, when it's eye level, you only see two sides. So this time, we're going to go up. So somewhere above your horizon line, it doesn't even have to be where mine is, anywhere above, above this line, you're going to line your ruler up, making sure that you have a per you're going to make a perpendicular line, at a perfect right angle, you know, that's all this math. Um, I, however tall you want that box. So somewhere up above, somewhere up above your line, draw the line that's closest to you. And I'm going to do another one over here just to show you that it doesn't matter uh, where. I'm just, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little one up here. And I'll do one over here. All right, so I've got three boxes started because I had three lines, the point closest to me. So I'm going to do the one I first that I've drawn. And just like we did over here, the right side of the box goes to the right side over here. So I'm going to aim, always aim to your vanishing point and draw however wide you want it to be. And I just slide this down. I'm still aiming to my right vanishing point. We have an amber alert or something. <laughs> Okay, and then once you have those two sides, then you can line it up, turn your ruler around, and close out the back side. We're always going to do the sides before we do the top or bottom. So we did this one side. Now we're going to aim to the other side.